Hey everyone, welcome to our week 12. Uh, it's going by really quick. Um, again, sorry we're not in person. That was the plan for today. We had um, more so than normal say that they wouldn't be there. Um, so I figured let's just go ahead. We'll do uh, another online one. Um, but uh, it was planning on being a rather quick one because part of your assignment I wanted to give you today to go ahead and start working on it. Um, before I tell you about the assignments and going over the calendar, let's talk today about uh, directing. Um, that was kind of the, the crux of what we were going to be doing today. Um, and doing a fun little lab with it as well. Um, so directing is one of the things that I really love to do. I actually became, um, direct, that was like the first thing I wanted to do. Um, and act and I just started putting myself in scenes um, as a way to get to act and then pick stuff up along the way. Um, to start things off I thought it'd be kind of fun um, to show you uh, another Hollywood Hack episode. Alright, enjoy. Hollywood Hack! Directing, take six. This really should be 16 but we're missing a one. Alright, so what are we talking about? We'll just do our regular banter opening and... I figured that's what that would be. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Matt. And I'm Cam, and this is the Hollywood Hack. Today we're gonna to talk to you about directing. Lights, camera, and action. People just kind of jump right into wanting to be a director. This is crazy, this is crazy, this is crazy. But there's some tips that we learned along the way that might benefit you on your project. Always remember, 90% of directing is casting. <laughs> Very, nice. very, very, that was very good. very good. Tip number one, know the material and show the material. Okay, just watch me. It's so simple, you sissy Marys. Be bold in your decision-making process. That is, you know the script inside and out, and then you translate your knowledge of that script to things like storyboards and animatics. There is a lot of times first-time directors, filmmakers, can't communicate their vision. You lift. I know what to do. No, but you keep on doing this. Bags. You have to lift, it has to be close, and you have to extend it out to them. Do you want to do it? Yes, here, watch how easy this is. Write it down, draw it, do whatever you can to communicate. Then you get your first AD <laughs> to implement your plan exactly how you want. Tip number two. Rehearse, but don't overdo it. You want to get your actors together as much as possible, especially if they've never really met before or really worked together. If you're doing a drama and the first time that someone's meeting the character playing their mother on set, you know, 20 minutes before they roll, they're not going to have the dynamic of a family. He was an amazing man. Grandpa Seth has remained in all our hearts, but you must banish him from your mind. If you're doing no and low budget, filmmaking, you're probably getting the person who works a day job or a weekend job or something like that. So they don't have a lot of time to come and rehearse that often. So you need to take advantage of it while you can. Do a table read to start, block out some scenes that might be complicated, but don't get in their head too much and don't rehearse too far in advance because everything's going to be forgot mm -hmm. by the time you get to set. The other thing too is you want to catch the magic on camera. Don't catch it in rehearsal. It's on, wax off, breathe in, breathe out. Very important. A lot of really great actors will only give you about 60 to 80% during rehearsal. They're not going to go all out. If they have to weep and cry over their dead parakeet, most actors aren't wanting to go all Laurence Olivier in rehearsals. No! Tip number three, be willing to compromise. You'll find every step you take, you gotta learn to compromise. You gotta let everybody bring their art to the screen. Cameron, let me set the stage for you here if I can. Go for it. You're a first AD on a set. You're three hours behind schedule, Whew. but your director has some very specific shots he wants to get in a scene. What do you do? I pull my hair out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not gonna take this anymore. It's, it's better to get it done and, and in the can, as they say, 
rather than your artistic vision being 100% perfect, get it done. You know, the costumes don't turn out exactly like you like, the hair is not exactly how you like. Learn to compromise. Frank, we must all compromise. Bull Tip number four, you set the tone on set. You, as the director, are the driving force behind the film getting done. If you're throwing your coffee across the set, if you're screaming at people, I help you. Do you understand me? No, no, no. I'm being a f***ing collaborator. I'm just trying to help you figure out your f***ing I'm not here to be yelled at. I worked on this f***ing thing for three f***ing years. Not to have some f***ing yell at me in front of the room when I'm trying to f***ing help you. Figure it out yourself. The whole... <laughs> Esprit de corps, as they say, is going to plummet like the Hindenburg. <laughs> you as a director have to be that one in a good mood because the first AD is probably going to be in a stressed mood. But, but he does have calmness. Yes, he never gets angry or yells. Let the first AD do the heavy lifting and be the bad guy. The director needs to be the good guy. They need to be fun guy. What do I do? Do I just stand here like an object? No. You do an eclectic celebration of the dance. You do fussy, fussy, fussy. You do Martha Graham, Martha Graham, Martha Graham. Or Twyla, Twyla, Twyla. Or Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd, Michael Kidd. Or Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. Well, when we were getting our masters, this guy directed a short film called The Elevator Affair. I had to... All right, I'm going to pause it right there because all we do from this point is um, talk about another movie um, that we shot, which you've already seen, The Elevator Affair. All right, so some fun, easy stuff, maybe some things in there that seem self-explanatory or whatever, um, but stuff to consider. Okay, working with actors. Now, I totally, totally understand that most people are going to be working with friends or family on this, um, which that's fine. I've done that before, too, but... Even still, I want you to approach it like this is your job, this is your profession, you know, that you're looking at this through the eyes of an actual director when you're making your final production. So, keeping that in mind, um, always use actors if you can. Again, understand circumstances are what they are. Um, just like anything else, it's going to be that much better. Um, to use actors. So I know for a fact there's a theater department. I know there's actors on campus. Um, so I would suggest finding somebody that wants to act. They're going to be able to provide you the, the ease and the stress of using your friends and uh, the, well, the, the ease of using your family or friends um, may seem better than um, the stress of actors that you don't know or don't work with. Um, I mean, obviously, you don't want to just bring in anybody and say, okay, now come on and act. You probably want to rehearse them or have them read lines or do a read, something like that, so you know they can act, and then you get to know them. And um, there are a lot of crazy actors out there. I will tell you, in the film world in general, lots of crazies, um, just, just a given. But I want to give you the experience of actually getting to direct. So, again, I know a lot of people have put, I'm using my friends, I'm using my family. Um, in their lookbook, I'm encouraging you to not, but I'm not requiring you. Um, but just for the sake of this being what it is, if you can find actual actors, I would do that. So how do you find actors? Well, at SAU, I would just post something for auditions and hold an audition. Um, if I was you, again, not requiring it. Um, there's you could post on Facebook, any sort of social media, um, and you might find someone, you might be surprised. Most people, most the scripts in class, they're just, they're not that difficult. Um, so I can understand why you might not want to go that way. Strongly encourage it. It will be a night and day difference, I think, if you, if you use actors. It's just like anything else. If you were to use one of your friends to, um, to operate the camera, they're not going to know as much as an actual camera operator, given I think a lot of people are using their phones, but you get what I mean. Um, another thing you could do is if you do hear someone in class is doing a shoot where they're using actors, 
ask them if you can help on their shoot and then go and meet their meet their actors. I've actually met a lot of people that way. It's just being on set with them. I like their work ethic and I like their chops. I give them a card, get their contact information, and, and then try and cast them in my own thing. Um, okay, so whoever it is, friends, family, or new acquaintance, get them a script ASAP, even the small roles. Like, send it over to them, have them look at it, um, You and... Give them deadlines for being memorized. Your friends or family probably aren't going to take this that seriously. So when you get to set, they're not going to have their lines memorized or they're going to laugh or they're going to get nervous. They're going to get all those things um, because maybe they were in a school play and they kind of had fun. Film is so different. You shoot out of order, right? You don't have the same experience like you would on a stage where you have that live audience and you get that response. It's it's the acting style for theater and film completely different. You have to find those emotions in yourself. You have to bring them out and you have to do all that while like 30 crew members are staring at you. It is really hard. I've gotten to be on some, some diff, just big sets and small sets. Um, and I am so surprised at what good film acting actors can do. They can just bring it every time. They are organized, they're prepared, they have their lines memorized, and every take you have to, the actors have to do the same action all the time. So let's say they come in the front door, they walk over to the coffee pot, they pour coffee, they open up a packet of sugar and they, they stir sugar into their coffee. That sounds simple, right? You have to do that 100% the exact same way for the wides, the mediums, the close-ups, maybe even the inserts. You have to use the same hand. You have to take a drink at the same time. You have to stir in the same direction. Um, That's called continuity. So when you're in there editing, if they're stirring the coffee with the right hand in one shot, they need to be stirring it with the right hand in every shot. Otherwise it jumps. on set, there's somebody called a script supervisor. That is their job to make sure the lines are said correctly and they they check continuity. Um, but friends, family, whoever, give them a date to be memorized. Um, and, you know, whatever you have to do to make sure that they, that they hit that. Uh, lock in your schedule. This is why I'm having you do a calendar so that not only are you giving them their script and you're saying learn your lines by this date, Um, they know your schedule for when you want to shoot. The other thing about using your friends and family, they are more likely to bail the day of shooting than an actor would. An actor is looking to do this, especially in college. They are wanting to create what is called a reel, which is basically just a bunch of different things that they have been in, compiled into one, um, sort of like a video business card or a video resume that shows what they have done and then they can get agents or send it to other directors, whatever they want. So actors are going to take it serious. They're going to show up and hopefully be serious about it. Um, Friends, family, whoever, ask how they like to be directed. Ask what's going to get the most out of them. If you're using a sibling, don't approach them like a sibling. Approach them like a client. Approach them like an actor. And treat them for the duration of that time as such. But ask them, you know, ahead. You might know, okay, I know how to get the best out of them. But just ask them, how would you like to be directed? I remember my brother one night, I was auditioning for the lead in a film. And I made it through one round. And the director said, can you film yourself doing a monologue, this scene? And I asked my brother to record for me with the hopes he would just press record. And we would be done. And it would take you know, 30 minutes. I think we started at something like 5 p.m. and we went until midnight. And um, he just kind of pushed me as as far as I can go um, as a director. So I ended up getting the part, but I didn't like, you know, I liked being directed a little different. Um, So even your siblings, just see what it's going to take to get the best performance out of them. Be a little like my brother is what I'm saying. Push them a little bit, even if they're a sibling. But make sure, make sure you are... um, respecting their boundaries like you would an actor who is not a family member. Um, treat them as an artist. If it's if it's someone who's an actor, respect 
um, that they know what they're doing um, and just respect their craft. A lot of times artists kind of, or actors kind of get overlooked is, oh, this is not that hard. It's really hard and it's really stressful, especially if they're taking it seriously. Um, it's, it's difficult. It's the most difficult job. Um, I mean, obviously not like a, being a, I don't know, the people in the Bering Sea who catch crab. Obviously that's harder, but be, being an actor is very intense. It's very hard. It's very competitive. Um, so be respectful. Most of you did some sort of wardrobe with your lookbook. Go ahead and make sure you're going over that wardrobe uh, with your cast. Um, tell them to bring options. It's a good way of doing things. You can have them maybe take uh, a picture of different outfits and then decide what you like the most. Um, but otherwise, um, tell them to bring options. Avoid very small stripe, white stripes in clothing. Um, the really, like the pinstripe things, when the white, the white is very close, um, try and avoid that. Okay, on set, provide food um, and a secure area that is theirs alone. They can do their hair, they can do their makeup, and they can just relax while you're getting the next stuff um, set up. That's just respectful. Again, friends, family, or um, and, uh, an actor that you meet, go ahead and do that. That's just good protocol. Um, always keep people up to date with what's going on. If anything changes, don't, you know, you can, you can start a group on any number of social media that you can let people know, hey, we're changing from this date to that date. You know, don't, don't email or text at midnight the night before and tell them things are gonna change the second you know your cast um, should definitely know and your crew. Um, take advantage of downtime to block or go over lines. Blocking is simply, are they move, wh where are they moving in the scene? Point A, point B, point C. Um, better way of doing it is year one, year two, year three. You walk in, you start at the door, that's your one. Um, you walk to the coffee pot, that's your, your two. And you walk to go get a mug, that's your three. Um, so if you have to do another, another take, you say back to one, that just simply means go back to the one. Um, but take advantage if there is any kind of downtime, maybe you're waiting on another actor to show up, something like that. Take advantage of that time. Go over lines. Go over your blocking. Don't just sit around and do nothing. Take advantage of any kind of downtime on set. Um, when you're filming, if you're not getting the performance you want, try and give them an activity. If you're watching, especially in dialogue scenes, student films, I see this all the time, people are just talking. They are sitting in chairs just talking and very rarely um, you know, do we actually do that? So instead of just sitting in a chair talking, if they have um, some kind of activity, they're washing dishes, they're cooking dinner, they're making the bed, do something in there so their mind isn't just on the line. Tell them to focus on that activity and the line comes. And then it also seems more natural. It doesn't have to even be big. Give them a pencil to twirl, something like that. Now when tonight or tomorrow when you watch a movie or show, watch the actors and see the scenes where they're actually doing an activity versus just sitting and talking to someone. Obviously there's time sitting and talking is what's more important. Um, but a lot of times it just gives it that much um, more depth if somebody's actually doing something. If they're still having a hard time, if they're not, uh, not sure how to deliver a line, try the magic as if. Um, if your actor has to have this, um, great epiphany at a certain moment. They've, they've figured everything out um, in the scene, but they, their, their performance is just flat. Tell them, try the scene as if they just won the lottery, as if their greatest wish has come true. Whatever you can find, tell them to do it as if, find something that they can relate to that's probably happened to them or something that they can envision happening. Do the scene as if you just won the lotto. Okay, people can, oh, okay, so they keep that in mind as they're delivering their lines, as they're doing whatever it is. So it's, it's called the magic as if. If they're not able to just kind of jump over that hump, maybe they're not a trained actor, and their performance is just flat, give them an as if. And of course, don't push people too hard, take a break. Friends, family, whoever, take a break. Do not push them hard. Their performance will just go down. They're just going to want to get out of there. They're not going to deliver their lines well. Take a break. Make the experience fun. Give positive feedback. You can be constructive, but be positive. Say, that was great. 
Um, a lot of times actors are going to want to try things their way too. Get it the way you want. Make sure you got the shot that you want and that it's done well. And then if there's time, provide them that opportunity to try it their way. And who knows, in post, you might be like, oh, their way was better. But then you have options. Avoid eyelines if possible. Eyelines are simply just, if you're not in the scene, the actors don't need to make eye contact with you. So your crew, cast, if they're not needing to watch a scene in such a way that um, they could possibly be interfering, you know, have them just avoid the eye lines of the actors. It's very easy to just throw you off of what you're trying to do if the gaffer is staring at you while eating a sandwich or something and you're supposed to be doing a scene where you're crying. You know, just get people out of the way so the actors can act. Explain the shot, set up the framing, the depth of field, all those things. Let people know where the camera's going and what it's doing. A really good actor will ask these things. Um, so just, you know, let them know we're going to pan from here to here. That way they know where to go. We don't have lights like, you know, big production. So that would be the other thing is letting them know where their mark is to, to be um, perfectly in the light. Again, you shoot out of continuity. So you might shoot scene five, then scene two, then scene four, then scene one. You need to talk them through the emotions. Um, sometimes I've used numbers. Is it, I don't need to be too emotional here. Am I just coming back from a highly emotional scene where I, maybe I get broken up with by someone? So um, maybe we're not shooting the breakup scene, but we're shooting the scene afterwards. I got to recall those emotions. I got to know what's going on. So I sometimes use a number, however you want to say, what emotional level are you at? Um, this might sound obvious, obvious, but they shouldn't look like they are acting. It should seem real. That's, that's when you know they're a good actor, when they does not seem like they're acting. Keep people at ease. Sometimes I don't even tell the actors I'm recording because as soon as they know you're rolling, they just get this stilted and ugly performance. If they don't think it's recording, you know, they might loosen up and just be themselves. Um, so that's a thing. Just tell them, don't act. Just be yourself. Just relax. It's, you know, just be yourself. So don't look like they're acting. A lot of people are coming from, again, that theater background where you have to make these big, bold gestures so the people in the back row um, will see what you're doing. Every blink, every eye twitch, everything that camera is going to capture. You don't have to move big. Move small, if at all. A lot of times you just watch how little actors in film are actually moving the really good ones. Every time they turn their head, every time they blink, really good actors can control that. They are well aware when they're doing something. Um, as I always say, HD does not lie. That high definition is gonna capture everything. So you don't need to be big. Believable is what you're going for. Um, one little thing, watch. Um, an actor's eyes, make sure they're not blinking too much. Some people, when they're nervous, they just start blinking like crazy. Go ahead and, and watch that. Um, just for your own edification, there's two major types of acting. There's a method where you're bringing emotions and things that have happened to you, and you're basically pulling those into your acting performance. This is like the most watered down way of knowing this, but the big thing is it's from the inside out. And then you have technical acting, which is the outside in. So how a character dresses, how they walk, how they talk, how they act, how they look, will um, be their kind of their cues for how their performance is done. Whereas method, they care about what's going on on the outside, but they start on the inside and really dissect a character from their own psyche and then try and build it back up with their own emotions in, and then they focus on the outside. I'm more technical. Um, I was just kind of taught that old school way of, of acting. So that's why I like the costume, I like the hair, I like the walk, I like the talk, that for me builds it. So maybe whoever you're using, work on that costume first. Maybe be bold in some of your, your production design choices and, and maybe that will help them. 
All right, so that is our lecture for the week. I want to go over, um, first of all, as far as your production calendar goes, kind of looking at everything here. Um, your shot list is, of course, due today, along with um, uh, your week 11 assignment number one. Those are due today, 5 o'clock. Actually, so past due, but there you go. Um, these are the things for the 10th, so next week. You have your location report. Um, you have your calendar. You have your lined script and a call sheet. Those are due next week. Now the call sheet, I am flexible with. If you don't have all your ducks in a row, that just needs to be um, sent to me a week before your production. If something small changes, maybe you go from a, a Saturday to a Sunday, that's fine. Um, don't put this off till the end, so a week before the first day you film. If, it, if it's not coming up, maybe you're shooting after Thanksgiving or some, you know, whatever the case may be, um, a week before then. But if you know what you're doing, that call sheet's got to be in as well. And then lastly, um, your storyboards. I will go ahead, uh, storyboards and photo boards. Those are due on the 14th. And let me just make sure... Um, that's what I have it set to. Usually there's a thing, let's see if it pops up. Okay, yeah, I have that set to the 14th at midnight, actually. So you have a little bit more time on that. And again, that is, um, you can do storyboards, photo boards, um, either one. If you wanna do overheads, I'd accept that as well. Um, so you have any and all those uh, options. Again, go back to um, that, that previous lecture where I go over how all of these are done. Um, and that should get you in the right direction. I have on here, um, very loud car going by. Um, just kind of an overview. Um, here again, our dates and things like that. Um, if you need to refer back to, I have, um, an assignment for you this week as well. Let's go over that. Okay. So you have a short script and a scene. It's 100 points total. So um, this, if you've been needing to get your grade up, this is a good project um, for you to, you know, really accumulate some more points um, to, to help boost your grade. Um, really, I want you to focus on conflict, especially in the script, introducing strong conflict. Okay, so for this, what you're going to do is you're actually going to direct somebody else's script. So here's where it gets a little interesting. We, <coughs> excuse me, we have 50 points for the script. That is due this, um, this Friday by 1230. No late work, none whatsoever. Um, I need that in by 12.30 because other people are going to be, um, they're going to be directing what you write. So we need those in. Um, email it to me and then at mgtfoss at gmail.com. That one, I've, it's right here if you need to find it. Um, now I have it also to where um, I did this and that I cannot find a student view on discussions. So I have it marked here as week 12 script upload. Um, I'm not sure what the student view is. So I think you'll be able to upload it there, but go ahead and email it to me as well. Um, Blackboard is the most insanely annoying software I've ever seen for school. Like it just, it's so frustrating. I try to find out today to make sure this has worked. If one of you wants to be really cool and say, um, hey, Mr. Foss, we yes, it's showing me I can upload a document on here um, and I see where to post it. Great. If you're not sure, email it to me and that's that will be fine. As long as it's in before 1230 on Friday, you will be fine. I will totally accept a an email of it because I am not certain of this, but I want to get you all the scripts as soon as possible. So again, everybody, whether you're 
well, nobody's in class. Um, get it in by 1230. That way people can go through the scripts and they can pick one that they want to do. Um, okay, so in your script, correctly format it. So you're going to want to use that Keltex again. Include on the on just on the very top, include your name as the writer. So that's got to be on there. All right, so here's sort of the requirements for it is um, no more than two locations. They should be generic and easily accessible, like a classroom, a bedroom, dorm, kitchen, something that anybody can get to easily. Um, you have to have two characters, character one, character two. Just name them that. That way they're sort of um, genderless. If someone wants to make, you know, two girls, two guys, one guy, one whatever the case may be, um, you have an endless possibility uh, for what you can do there. Um, your script must have in an action line. So I just mean the, the area of the script where you write out the action. Um, this has to be in there. Character one wears a blank. Okay, whatever it is. The filmmaker, the director, who you know, you decide what they wear. It should be prominent, such as a distinct hat or shirt. Just something in there. Um, so that's in there. And then character two's last line must be blank. So the director has to come up with whatever that line is. All right, so that's the requirements for the script. So you'll find, uh, if for some reason it's not on discussions and you're not seeing them, I will post them on, um, on Blackboard. I will post them right beneath where this assignment is due and I will just populate um, something. That probably would have been the easier thing, but I wanted to make sure you could maximize your time. Um, I, I teach until 3.30, 4 o'clock uh, most every day. So I wanted to make sure that something didn't happen, you know, whatever, that everybody could just upload it directly. But I will make sure that these, if, if the discussions is not working, I'll make sure that these are on Blackboard. Um, in its own little module thing um, right next to the assignment. And I'll send out an announcement about it too. Um, okay, so um, your film must be a minimum of seven shots total. Uh, oh wait, up here, I forgot to mention um, the length of the script. I truly apologize. So this is, um, one, two, one and a half. So one to one and a half pages. Don't make it any longer. You know, make your make your life simple. One to one and a half pages. All right, one page correctly formatted should be one minute. Um, so if you're less than 45 seconds, um, you're rushing it, okay? So 45 seconds to a minute and a half. And then seven shots at running time. Um, a title card, you can put it at the beginning or the end, either one is fine. A title of the film, your name, and a written by uh, credit. Okay, so that is the assignment for this week. Again, um, get me everything by um, 1230 for the script, and then the film itself is due next week, 1110 at 5 p.m. So I know there seems like a bit, a lot that's going on this week. Don't stress, most of this should not be that hard. Your scripts aren't that long, so I think y'all will do really good. I've been very pleased with the lookbooks are fantastic. Um, I wanted to go over them today um, with you. If you want to do a one-on-one -on -one and go over your lookbook or your experimental film, or just talk about your production in general, send me an email. I'd be glad to meet with you and we could go over it and get everything right. Um, all right, just really quickly to... Um, let's just look so you don't forget these things here, way down at the bottom. We've done a lot. Don't forget um, your bare bones reading part two, November 24th. Um, and I'm going to move this up here so it's easier to see. And then don't forget about your film journals again. Just that constant reminder. Don't put that off to the end. You'll regret it. Um, cool. So that is all for today. That is directing. Go ahead and use this time now to um, begin working on your script.
and focus on conflict and seven shots, minute, minute and a half film. 45 seconds to a minute and a half film. All right. Good luck. Thank you all. Have a good rest of your week. And hit me up again if you need anything. All right. Bye.